I had a couple of homemade light uh, standards, actually uh, uh, poles that I had made a couple of years ago, and I have them on, at the freight station down as you first come into the area. Just there's a little freight station past the zoo, and uh, uh, one of them got broken while we were cleaning. So I thought, well, while well, I have them, you know, I'm replacing them. What I was go what I wanted to do is I wanted to change from regular incandescent bulbs to LEDs because LEDs obviously are going to last a lot longer and LEDs look a little bit better I think for this type of outdoor lighting. So uh, I'm going to show you how to make these little lights using some uh, KNS aluminum tubing, brass tubing and uh, actually the Plastruct um, light shades. And uh, now the unfortunate part about it is you may have to wait till this Christmas to actually finish this project because what I did was I used LED lights that I bought at my hardware store. They're actually a batter little battery powered. They were really small, but I'll tell you what they are and maybe you'll be able to find them or maybe, like I said, you may have to wait till next year to finish this project because these are really small LEDs. One of the first things you're going to have to do is decide how tall of a uh, light standard if you want. Uh, what I made was, I made ones that ended up so that they're going to be about five inches above the layout. The top of the crook here will be about five inches above the layout. Uh, that gives us about a 20 foot high light standard. Now what I, what you also have to do is go get a pack of the Plastruck uh, LF-8 it's a 5 8 inch light shade, okay? Um, it's already, looks like a light shade, so we're gonna use that, but I'm, then get some aluminum tube that's 1 8 inch outside diameter. Then you'll need either brass or aluminum telescoping tube. In other words, you want the next size tube that goes on, out, on the outside of that, and then the next size outside of that. So therefore, you'll need three different sizes of, of aluminum tube. Now you can also use brass. This is, I use partly a uh, brass tube because I just went to my junk box of tubing and found some small pieces and then I was able to cut them. Um, but what you gotta do is you gotta be able to bend that crook at the top, which is actually, to me, the hardest part. Okay, I have a, a set of small tubing benders that are also, I believe they're made by K&S too. A lot of hobby shops are gonna carry them also. And um, you start by putting the tubing bender over top of the aluminum tube, like this. Now, I used a piece of pipe. I believe this might be three-quarter inch pipe. It uh, might be even, you know, it's half inch inside diameter pipe. But it comes out to be about seven-eighths of an inch on the outside. Now, I'm going to bend this tubing around this piece of plastic pipe. That'll give me my crook at the very top of my light, okay? It's not easy. You have to work extremely slow in small bends. It's a lot easier also to make this part a lot longer down here, and then you can cut that off before you go, uh, once you get your bend in. But again, bending tubing is a very, very slow process. The whole idea of the tubing bender is that you don't get a huge kink in your tubing, which I still get no matter what I do. A lot of times I'll get a little bit, I, I got a bad, bad spot already. Um, but you work a little slow. You really have to work extremely slow at this. And after you mess up a couple, you'll get it. I got my, my bend at the top of the my, my uh, gooseneck style lamp. Um, I have two of them here and uh, again you have to decide what height you want this at. Now what I'm going what we're going to do is we're going to take a light and we're actually going to put these pieces of out a uh, larger uh, tubing on the over that to make it look like a telescoped gradual down to this eighth inch tubing here, okay? What you have to do is you have to start by taking 
the next size tubing that you've cut to four inches, which would actually fit over there, over here, okay? And then the next size is two inches. And again, this is all up to you, however high you want to make your, your crook. Uh, what you do is put them together, okay? Pull it apart a little bit, add a little bit of super jet, just a smidge, you don't need a lot. Take it, and I twist it to make sure the super jet's in there, okay? And that's all you got to do, all right? Now, these, this is exact, you know, th this is now going to be flat. Those two pieces will be flat against there. So here's one I've already done also in, but it's in brass because that's, I had scrap brass. Again, like I said, I have a lot of scrap stuff that I have laying around. Now, what I want to do is, <clears throat> since I already know that this is going to be five inches, five inches will be my mark here on my tube. That's the part that's going to be above the layout right there. The rest of this is going to, the rest of this will stay on because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole and drop that down in and then that'll hold as long as you don't bump it really hard. Okay, so what next is, is put this up inside here, the piece you just glued. Now I'm going to mark this at the very top so I know approximately where that goes up to. I add a little bit of glue. And I'm turning it as I'm putting it up to that mark. That way I know that I have glue all the way around inside here. So there's that part. Okay, now, the well, next part, of, um, what we'll do is, we're going to see, I'm going to show you how you take this and edge it out. In other words, uh, we, we need to feather, from, I want to feather from uh, one tubing size to the next tubing size. A way to feather this is, I'm going to take super glue and I'm going to run it right around that joint, that first joint, like that. And I'm going to fill that in. Now, I'm going to keep twir twirling that because gravity is going to want to pull that bubble down. So as I twirl it, I'm going to add a little bit, put a little accelerant on here. That will make everything set up. And we're going to do that again over here. Okay. Right now it doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot because it's a big blob of super glue. But if you take a file, you can file that off. Start on the big the big section and file, and then work down across the glue onto the next size smaller piece of brass or aluminum. If you're going to use aluminum, be very careful when you're filing because it's going to file a lot quicker than the brass will. And you can pretty much feel when you get it nice and smooth and, the, and, it, and it becomes a very nice gradual gradation back down into there. Okay, so we're going to do the top one too. Okay, so here's one that I've, I have filed. Now, we're going to take the plastic, take the plastic uh, lampshade, and I drilled the lampshade out because when it when you get it, it's got a smaller hole in it. I'm going to drill that lampshade out to one eight with a one eighth inch bit 
because the one eighth inch bit will obviously be the same size as the smaller piece of tubing. Once you do that, you're just going to push that on and you don't have to glue it because that's going to get very, that's going to get tight enough that you don't even have to do anything else to it. So there you have a, your little lampshade. Now I go down to my uh, hot, uh, my uh, uh, favorite hardware store a lot and in there they have these little collar, these little uh, plastic collars and I'm going to show you, I put that around the bo bottom here and it gives it a very small base. We'll get to that. Okay, these little LEDs are built, are made actually to work off this little battery pack. The little battery pack actually has three AA batteries in it, which is four and a half volts. So what I did was I'm going to uh, probably, you know, I, I, I can either power them with uh, 12 volts or five volts or whatever um, in a DC. Now, you're gonna to wanna, to, you're gonna to have to find which one of these is positive, which is negative. And they only work one way with DC. If you hook it up backwards, then flip it around and hook it up the other way. But make sure you put a 470 ohm resistor in line with your positive lead. Without the resistor, if you hook 12 volts up to it, you're going to blow that little light LED out right away. Now, for some reason or other, the voltage that is supplying these at the Choo Choo Barn is 9.5 volts AC. Um, that's not a polarized. That's not polarized. So all I'm going to do is take that same 470 ohm resistor hook it to either one of these sides and take that and put that to my nine and a half volts and uh, it gives a great bright light and uh, but make sure you get that four, 470 ohm resistor available at Radio Shack uh, you can buy them a little pack of five I think for around buck fifty or something like that but make sure you get that, re that resistor in there once you get everything glued together Again, you don't have to glue the shade on. Once you get everything glued together, though, the best thing, the next thing to do is to paint the crook, the top of the shade, black. Because most every parking lot that I've ever been into, I've seen these, they're, they're black. Then paint the inside of the shade silver. That'll give a little bit of reflection. Uh, and also, they're either painted silver, a lot of times they're painted white. I painted mine, I just elected to paint mine silver. So now, um, what we're going to do is, we're going to thread some wiring through. But first, what I want to show you is the lights that I bought. These are uh, little lights that uh, were available around Christmas time. They actually have a website here, it's gkilights.com. And it's, you get 18 lights, uh, it's a little battery pack. And they're, uh, you can get them in, in white, in a multicolor, a warm white, which is how I bought them. I thought, you know what, for the price, you get 18 very small LEDs on a wire. So, here's what they look like when they're lit up. Now, you can imagine, you can see how small these are. They're really tiny lights, tiny LEDs. 18 of them, I think I may have paid 10 bucks for them. You do the math, that's not bad, that's not bad. So what I did was, I cut that green wire off, put the battery pack in my junk box, and I ended up with that, all right? So, I very carefully take my little nippers, and I've cut at the end here, I've actually taken and cut one of the little LEDs right at the very end, cut both those wires, and so therefore I end up with a piece of wire and an LED on the end of it. Now, what I need to do is obviously I need to make this longer. So I bought some magnet wire at Radio Shack and it's a 26 gauge wire, I believe. Um, it's green, the same color. It's an enamel colored covered wire. It's a very nice wire. I bought a roll and I then Took my, took each one of the leads, each one of those leads, took a X-Acto knife, and I scraped that green enamel off the whole way around on both leads. Now, what I did was I staggered those two leads so that the joint wasn't right beside each other because when I 
elongate, you know, make this wire longer, I have to cover that solder joint with a, a, a piece of shrink tube. So I don't want the two pieces of shrink tube right next to each other, because if, if you do, it's going to get way too thick to go through that aluminum tube. But if you stagger them, you'll be able to pull that through there. Now, let me just show you here what happens. Now, I have one here that I actually took off of the, off of the Choo Choo Barn layout, and I'll show you how, how we're gonna do that. We just take the wire, take this wire, up through. This was a double one I built a couple years ago by taking two of those lights that I just made, did not, and I did not put the outside pieces on of, uh, 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 the round aluminum, I took a piece of square k &S brass and I took two of those aluminum there we go, came out the, they came out the bottom here I took two of the square or uh, round aluminum ones and put them inside of a piece of square actually that's a number, it's a rectangle, excuse me uh, number k 266 that one eighth inch tubing fits right inside of there. Two of them side by side ends up making a double light. But anyway, so here we are. I'm gonna pull this down through very carefully. Now we're gonna to get to that so I wanna be able to, I'm gonna make sure I can feed that through there. Again, this is one of those things that you gotta just do until you finally feel comfortable doing it. Okay? Once you get the uh, shrink tube through here, it will go easily. Now I take my, uh, a pair of pliers here I have that are, that actually have round, a round nose on it. And I just wanna bend this back like that and then bend it around as a 90 degree turn so now what will happen if you can see this it's just like a bent at a 90 degree so that this now will go up inside that light and there it is the light is actually, the, the little LED is actually up inside the housing. And I'll do that now for the other side. And uh, the whole idea, it's, it's basically done now. So, you know, a little bit of brass, a little bit of aluminum, a little bit of lighting. <laughs> you may have to, again, you may have to wait till uh, winter time, but that's what happens. And, uh, there's another one. This is another one that I took out of the Choo Choo Barn layout because it had a regular incandescent bulb, incandescent bulb in it. And then here's the other one, totally finished. Three different styles with the crook top. Looks something like an old uh, Lionel 54 lamp. They're a lot of fun to build. Don't take that long. In, a, in an afternoon, you could probably knock out 10 of them if you had to.